won't let go of me. <laughs> I, I, I just want to go home. <laughs> let go. Get off. <laughs> let go. Sir. Let's begin. When I took over command of this brigade two months ago, I ordered a command climate survey be conducted, and we're here today to discuss the findings of that report. I'm counting on all of you to bring me up to speed on our situation here. Our SARC Sharp specialist, Ms. Jensen, is first on the agenda, and I'm going to turn the time over to her to start. I'm passing around the findings of the command climate survey as it relates to sexual harassment and sexual assault. In the last year, we had 11 reports of sexual harassment, nine informal, two formal. We had six reports of sexual assault, four unrestricted, two restricted. Most of these were soldiers, one dependent family member. Our brigade statistics line up pretty closely with those of the Army-wide stats when you consider the number of personnel in the brigade. 86% of the victims that reported incidents were females. 14% were males. And it's important to note, due to the higher percentage of men to women in the military, studies show that overall, there are more males than females that are victims. However, males are less likely to report. Over half of these assaults occur on the weekend. Many involve alcohol. The vast majority involve a victim and an offender that are acquainted. Most of these are young soldiers. 84% E1 through E4. 60% of their offenders are also E1 through E4. Again, we had 11 sexual harassment cases, six sexual assaults. That's 17 people Please remember, these are people, they're not just numbers. Okay, the more troubling information is over on page two. 66% of the soldiers in this brigade said that they would not report sexual assault. 77% said they wouldn't report sexual harassment. 41% believe that someone in their organization would be able to get away with sexual harassment. Now, there are more stats in the report, but in short, we have a problem. There's a lack of faith in the system to report. These people think that sexual harassment and sexual assault is normal. And the results of this survey show that our brigade's efforts to prevent sexual harassment and sexual assault are not widely accepted or adopted. And starting today, that's going to change. This is a threat to the entire Army. Under my command, we will take every effort to eliminate instances of sexual harassment and sexual assault. Even one case is too many. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of us do not seem entirely convinced. Permission to speak freely, sir. Go ahead. You know the leaders are going to resist, sir. Everyone feels we've already done all we can on this matter. They're going to say, aren't there more important subjects to focus on? Most of you don't know this. But during my last deployment, somebody very close to me was sexually assaulted by a soldier. And it happened right here. <laughs> You ever think about going pro, Corporal? Because that gutter ball was sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, laugh it up, boys. What can I say? I was a little uh, distracted. Well, damn. The ladies on lane seven are looking good. Hey, uh, am I crazy or were they looking at Jay? You serious? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been looking at you all night. No way. How about you guys quit drooling and just bowl? Well, it's your ball, so whenever. Oh, right. I'm gonna go take a piss. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, you're welcome. Great. I thought it was just supposed to be the squad tonight. Come on, that was all talk. He's not gonna do anything about it. Are you sure about that? Okay. 
See? No problem. I mean, you guys have known Jason's his first deployment back when he was practically still in Pampers. We've been to hell and back together. He's a good kid. <clears throat> so are you all from around here? Yeah. We're on summer break. Oh yeah? We're on a bit of a summer break ourselves. We just got back from Afghanistan last week. We just finished school. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. You at state? Uh huh. Yeah. Nah, man, I'm serious. Walker's the real deal. Back when we were in theater, we got in a firefight, and everyone's freaking out. But Walker, he kept us cool, saved all our asses. I just got clips. It's, it's really not a big deal. Oh, hell, it wasn't, man. Show me your scar. What? What? Did that hurt? Nah, it was fine. Sometimes you gotta take a hit for your brothers. And your sisters. Yeah, yeah. All right, dumbass. It's time to leave. Hey. What's this say? Okay. Tell you what, you ladies want to ride with us? I'm headed back to our post right now to get totally trashed. We are? I know. No thanks, we just started a new game. I'm in. You coming to Lana? Yeah, let's go. I think we're gonna stay here. Wait, I wanna come too. Why? Did you leave something? No, I forgot to get back my shoes. <laughs> I have always wanted a pair of those. Yeah? That'd be a good look for you. And again, I feel like everything's a good look on you. Hey, what's up? Uh, I thought tonight was supposed to be us spending time together as a unit. Well, I guess now it's the unit, plus uh, some new friends. Yeah, well, if you guys are getting a bunch of girls drunk, then I'm not hanging around. And you know better. But keep tabs on Jay. He's got that look in his eye. I will. Okay, I will. Like I told you before, Jay's a good guy. Yeah, well seriously, stay sober. Somebody has to be the grown up. Don't be You're great, you're great. <laughs> shoot him! <laughs> shoot him, shoot him! Oh! oh. oh. Alright. All right, that's it, you guys. I think it's time for me to take the girls home. Already? It is two in the morning. <laughs> okay to drive, because. I'm not. Um, where's your guys' friend? <laughs> <laughs> Alana? Yep. I think she went outside. That was a while ago. <laughs> Everything's fine. Walker's there with her. Okay. All right. Well, I left my keys in the other barracks, so I'm gonna be back. You guys sit tight. Sit tight. No, no. You come on. No, I should probably go. <laughs> What's the rush? My friends might be worried. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're that worried. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to anymore. <laughs> no. I just want to go inside. Yeah. No, just let me Listen, go inside. Listen, you're not gonna go inside. Let go. Stop. <laughs> let go of me. Let go. Fine, okay? just... I just want to go. Let go!
family is going to be dealing with the trauma of what happened next for the rest of our lives. But I don't just blame Specialist Walker. I blame myself. This was a failure of leadership. And that starts from the top of the chain on down. There is so much that could have been done in front of the problem to prevent this. And that's inexcusable. Not in my army. Now the Pentagon says that this is a leadership priority throughout the army. It's personal for me, but it's important for every single member of the army community. Every victim is somebody's sister or daughter or mother or brother. The colonel's right. This isn't just a male on female issue. Most of the victims, as I stated, are males, and they're even less likely to report. That's why we're all here today, to talk about what we can change to make sure that this doesn't happen to someone else's loved one in the future. While the personal costs are high, the cost to our army is high as well. Ms. Jensen, can you explain how this incident has affected the unit? That unit is still struggling. The offender is serving time, but he was a highly regarded soldier, and his conviction has caused a lot of division. Trust is damaged, there's a lot of blaming and a definite loss of focus. Their first sergeant tells me that the perpetrator's actions destroy morale and ruin mission performance. Frankly, I think most of the soldiers are planning to leave the Army as soon as they can. It's a waste. Because of him, soldiers were pulled away for interviews with investigators, and then people missed days of work to testify at the court-martial. The first sergeant feels it's really impacted their ability to complete the mission. We cannot afford any more incidents. And change has to start with our words. Everything we say affects the environment around us. You all know the pattern. Sexualized speech can lead to sexual harassment, which can escalate to sexual assault. Everybody has to understand that prevention of sexual harassment and sexual assault is their responsibility. Even the buddy who overhears some inappropriate comment or the bystander who sees something. Every soldier needs to be empowered to intervene to stop sexual harassment and sexual assault. Think of the situation we were just discussing. There were numerous opportunities when someone could have stepped in to intervene. Her friends could have acted to protect her and themselves long before she was in danger. They could have intervened indirectly without a confrontation. Indirect intervention could be anything from distracting the potential attacker to changing the subject to inserting oneself into a risky situation so the potential victim is never left alone. Even later, Someone must have seen that trouble was brewing. Instead of egging him on, one of Private Walker's fellow soldiers should have confronted him. Direct intervention. That's right. Jay! Dude. Bad idea, man. Look, whatever it is you're thinking, you better slow down. She's way too drunk. Hey, uh, Alana, come on back, all right? Your, uh, your friends are wondering about you. Come on. But Corporal Wong was the last line of defense. If he had intervened, this wouldn't have happened. He could have distracted Walker, diffusing the situation. Walker! No. There you are. Um, hey, man, the guy's about to start up a game of poker. You want you to come in and lose all your money? Yeah, well, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Well, uh, I'm about to give the girls a ride home. Alana, you ready to go? Yeah, I am. There's other ways he could have handled it, too. If he was uncomfortable getting involved alone, he could have asked for help from someone else. Get off! No, I don't... Let go of her, now! She's having fun, Doesn't man. Doesn't look like she's having fun. We talk about enemies in combat, but there are predators among those that we interact with every day. Studies show that most sexual assaults are committed by a small number of serial offenders who use alcohol to give themselves an alibi 
or to make the victim feel like they're responsible. There are predators among us, individuals who know what they're doing. They know how to target vulnerable people. Looks like I know what I'm doing tonight. They even know how to make it look like what happened was consensual. These people are very charming. They're very good at their work, and they know how to blend in. But they hurt people. We need to teach everyone how to recognize the warning signs so they can intervene early. We need to teach soldiers that alcohol and drug-assisted sexual assault is not okay, and it's a crime. We have people from different backgrounds, and we need to instill Army values across the entire group. That's why teaching our fellow soldiers how to effectively intervene is so important, because often it's possible to stop a perpetrator before things escalate and do permanent harm. Are you okay, honey? Oh, yeah, she's fine. You know, I don't, I don't think she's fine. And we need to believe our victims and take appropriate action against their offenders, no matter what the rank. I couldn't agree with you more, but let's talk about the root cause of the problem. Let's talk about lack of leadership or toxic leadership. As leaders, our words and actions have to show that we take these things seriously. Let's be honest. Are some leaders part of the problem? Do they make sexual jokes? Do they uh, blow off sharp training? Do they uh, expect soldiers to be kind of wild and crazy when they're off duty? You're right. When leaders don't take this matter seriously, soldiers take their cues from them. I mean, how often have you seen a sharp training session start out like this? All right, guys, that time of year again. We're going to be doing some sharp training. It's going to take a couple hours, so buckle up. Every year we do this. We watch the video, we get the instruction, we sign our names, we check the box. At the end, we're going to open the floor for questions. I expect that no one will have any questions. If you do have any questions, feel free. All questions will cost you 25 push-ups. Do I make myself clear? Yes. yes. All right, squad leaders, you're going to give me some good accountability. Send around a sign-up sheet. All right, let's move out. There will be no tolerance for leaders who are openly dismissive of sexual harassment complaints and reports. Too many people are prone to just disbelieve or even blame the victim. It has to stop, period. But we must help the victim recover and safeguard him or her from reprisal. Now, there's one other thing I want to talk about, and that's electronic communication. Ms. Jensen? I'm seeing more and more people, especially younger people, who don't understand appropriate boundaries when it comes to text, email, or other electronic communication. With new ways to communicate come new ways to get in trouble or hurt others. We have